Today we are going to see Elastic File System. That is another type of uh, storage offered by Amazon. And it has a lot of features which resembles uh, on-premise uh, NFS systems or Samba Share. So let us go ahead and see what it offers and what it can do for us. So it forms the file storage services offered by the Amazon storage. We saw block already. We saw archival storage. We saw file uh, object based storage. And when we are talking about file storage, EFS is your answer for that. So these are the summarized features of EFS when we are talking about cloud based file system. When you say seamless integration, you can integrate your EC2 instances. You can put it inside your VPC. You can have encryption configured on top of that. You can have different types of uh, availability zones. I mean, you can have the EFS file system available in different uh, availability zones. Uh, in, uh, when you're talking about uh, EBS, if you remember, it is available uh, zone specific, that is AC specific. Let us use that terminology for, uh, to stop confusions. When we are talking about EFS, uh, it can span across availability zones, but within the same region. So seamless integration is to multiple services, monitoring security uh, by VPC, security by encryption, and also in terms of uh, EC2 instances, it can support. So all these services are nicely smoothly integrated. You just have to run a few commands in your terminal, then you can start consuming this service. And it scales up and down automatically. You don't have to do anything on the storage like we do in EBS. If you put a 10 day MB of data, you are going to be charged for 10 MB. If you are going to be uh, putting one terabyte, it, you are going to be charged for that. And next day you come back to five terabyte, then of course you can go ahead with that. So it scales up and down automatically. The performance for that kind of uh, storage is also scaling up and down. It is not just your uh, uh, size, increases and decreases the performance also increases and decreases and you have an option to say that i want provisioned the disk that is provisioned iops so that you will get consistent uh, input output uh, speed in your efs file system and once again it is a fully managed service so whenever you hear that the first thing that you need to get into your thinking is the installation configuration maintenance of updates patches security updates all those things are done by amazon you don't have to touch anything. You just go ahead and consume it and don't have to worry about the management part of it. And uh, we already talked about access across instances. So when you create an EFS file system, you can have multiple EC2 instances reading and writing to the same file system at the same time in real time. Uh, so the, the file lock mechanism or uh, corruption avoidance, all those things, uh, are built into the file system itself. Uh, the NFS has those protocols and you don't have to worry about uh, doing anything of your own. So you can go ahead and configure 10 different machines in the different availability zones and they can all write to the same file system. And it is fantastic in that way. And we spoke about the consistent performance because you can configure provisioned IOPS as we saw in EBS volumes. Uh, so you can dial up your performance or dial down as and when you require. A low cost, um, well, when comparatively, when you compare the other storages that are in the same market, that is file based storage in the cloud, managed services, security, EFS is uh, quite cost comp uh, comparative, I would say. If you just look at it as a separate storage without any reference point, uh, it doesn't look cheap. But when you talk about, uh, talk about a fully managed, secure, consistent performance and seamless integration, then and the cost really becomes compelling to go ahead and use this service. Highly available and durable because this service is built on top of S3 once again. That is uh, the 11 nines of uh, durability is available in S3. And this service uses storage from S3 service. So it is once again very highly and available and a durable service. And as I said earlier, you can have encryption by checking on the box by using Amazon keys or you can have encryption by your own keys and you can also use uh, security groups firewalls to see which instances can connect whether you can connect your EFS through the internet or you don't want to allow anybody from the internet to connect so those kind of firewall rules are also possible to secure your file system so this is a simple architecture uh, if it is overwhelming let us try to break it down and that is what we are going to build now the outermost rectangle that you see here is and think of it as an AWS region. Let us say for uh, this scenario, let us talk about US Virginia region. 
and inside that there is another bigger rectangle which is called as an availability zone let me try to highlight it now so this is the availability zone that is availability zone let us say that is called as us west 2a and there is another availability zone called as us west 2c uh, this is just a representational picture uh, might be the same thing in the real region might not so this region has two availability zones and inside those two availability zones i have two servers in this case i have started a t2 micro and in these t2 micros i have another efs file systems accessible here and here so what is happening here is this EFS file system sits outside your availability zones if you notice it and it sits inside the region. So it is not available outside the region but all of those AZs can access it by using a mount point. So you need to make sure you create a mount point in whichever availability zone you want to access the EFS and then you can configure your server to talk to it. And most importantly this is the first thing let us say creating the mount point. And second thing is you need to ensure that your firewalls are allowing this port. We are going to use NFS version 4. Uh, NFS is a network file system protocol and that package is uh, built in uh, this entire EFS file system is built uh, using this NFS packages and your Linux machines also need to have this NFS package installed. If you are using Amazon Linux, they come pre-installed with uh, some version. If not, you will have to go ahead and install. Another caveat here is Windows cannot be used for along with NFS because you need to install Samba share or something called as a CAFS. Then also it doesn't mount directly. That is, you cannot use NFS directly in Windows. So only Linux machines can use EFS at this moment. So with those caveats out of the way, so first thing is create your mount point, ensure that you have enabled your reports, and then go ahead and mount them in your uh, Linux servers just like you are mounting an EBS volume uh, you create a mount point and then you put in your device name and then instead of device name here you will give the NFS uh, mount point name and then the directory you should be able to start reading in files. So this is the demo we are going to build we are going to create an EFS we are going to create a couple of servers and then we are going to write something from server A let us say and then we are going to see whether we can modify it from server B so because it is going to happen in real time and all those uh, commit and transactions will be visible from B also. So if we do something from B and it should be visible in A as well. So let us go ahead and build this uh, demo in a short while. Before that, I wanted to share some of the use cases when people really use uh, these kind of file systems. Uh, the one common use case is uh, content repositories. Uh, let us say you have a group of developers and all of them want to access uh, the same website they're building so that one person might be building the home page another person might be building the home page images and then another person building the css style sheets html pages so all of them all the elements come together to create the web page so they need to have the same content repository and they have to access the set uh, latest files of everybody's creation so in those cases um, efs file system makes a fantastic use case so the same thing goes for i mean we saw about this content repositories and for development environment the other use case is let us say you have corporate how-to documents and all your employees want to access those how-to documents then in those cases you put in all the files because these are static files not going to change much and then you configure access for all your employees as a shared drive and then you can go ahead and browse them anytime or configure a website also on top of it like say static website using s3 buckets so that is also possible uh, so that is the two use cases next one is home directories let us say you create your employees have roaming profiles and every day they start up a new server then their home directory which is created on top of this efs file system will be auto mounted whenever they start a new machine and they can need not worry about my desk is here my laptop is here my desktop is here because their home directory is going to get mounted wherever they log in from and they will have access to all the files that they did uh, yesterday or previous time and they logged into their machines <clears throat> so that is another use case and uh, in a server level or data center level people use that for big data clustering because uh, all the data needs to be in one place for uh, quite a lot of big data analysis and efs being a scalable and high performance storage people configure their backend with uh, big data and web server farms wherever batch processing or uh, kind of uh, data processing happens 
uh, EFS becomes a fantastic use case for that. So these are the common use cases. If your customers ask for these use cases, then you can recommend EFS as one of the more solutions for them.